All right, so let, I want to come back to infrastructure. You're talking about you know moving beyond infrastructure, but there's still a lot of action going on there. Cloudera, Mapbar, Hortonworks. You have Adapt now entering the scene. Um, what's going on there? Who's winning? Who's losing? What are the key factors? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we, to my earlier point, uh, it's not to say that infrastructure is not important anymore. Uh, there's still a lot of development to go uh, happening and, and a lot more improvements need to happen to make uh, Hadoop and other early Hadoop quote unquote enterprise ready. Uh, so what's happening there is, you know, the way I look at that market is, uh, you know, you've got kind of the three big players that have been in the market now for a year or more. Uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR. Uh, and the way I look at it is, you know, MapR has taken the more proprietary approach. Uh, they're delivering, their, their premise was that, you know, the open source uh, world is just moving too slow. We want to uh, add some of our own IP, harden up Hadoop, and get it to market as quickly as we can. I think that's heresy, but they're kicking ass, aren't they? They're doing some great business. Uh, they're growing, uh, and you know they've got some great customer proof points. Uh, then you kind of got Cloudera, which is taking a little bit of a hybrid approach. You know they've got some proprietary management software around Hadoop, the open source core, uh, and they're you know they're they're uh, you know they've been in the business the longest, so they've got that inherent uh, they've got that lead, uh, which has helped them become the biggest of the three. Uh, but they're kind of playing the middle game, and then I looked at, at somebody like Hortonworks is really playing the long game. Uh, completely open source, uh, not charging for their product at all, uh, giving it away, seeding the market at this point, essentially. Uh, and are going to round that, uh, uh, build revenue off their services offering. Uh, but that, that takes time. And they've, you know, they've raised a lot of money, uh, you know, and they're not in a rush to start uh, really building revenue. Well, and that's Rob Bearden's specialty, right? Absolutely, he's done this before. So, so the idea is, let's see the market with our product. Let's get people using it. Let's get people uh, excited about it. And then, as they start to go into production in six months, a year, two years from now, we'll be there to provide the services, and that's how we'll monetize our business. That's the long game. So, kind of got Map Hour with the kind of the short game, Cloudera in the middle, and then uh, Hortonworks is the long game. And then you've got little startups uh, like Adapt doing some really interesting things. Yeah, Adapt is very exciting. I mean, we saw those guys. They won the best in show at Strata in the fall. My sources indicate that they've actually got some serious customer traction. I don't know if you've heard that. Um, uh, now, Impala is Cloudera's announcement. Essentially what, what these products do, if I understand, is they bring SQL and NoSQL together, bringing real time to big data uh, and Hadoop, essentially. Uh, and uh, Adapt, we had Ming Sheng Hong on uh, the Cube a while back, and he was really taking us through some of the functions that they've developed at Adapt. Uh, uh, things like the ability to u do user-defined queries, which, you, which are sort of new in this whole, whole world. So it seemed to me, Jeff, that they had a little bit of a technical lead, even though they maybe didn't have a market presence lead. Now, Impala is this sort of, you know, Cloudera's version of that. Um, you know, people are, you know, the knock on is, oh, maybe it was rushed to market. Cloudera says no. What's your take on all this? Help us squint through all the FUD. Sure. Well, I think, you know, to understand the fundamental idea here, uh, you know, Hadoop is fundamentally a batch uh, batch and load system. You, you, It's not ideal for running what you might call uh, fast, near real-time analytic queries, ad hoc queries. Uh, it's, it's a good place to run really deep, complex analytics against large volumes of data, but that takes time. MapReduce takes time to run, uh, depending on the size of the query and some other, uh, other um, criteria. Uh, so the idea is, uh, the idea has been thus far for most practitioners, early adopters of Hadoop is, let's get, uh, almost using Hadoop as an ETL layer, let's get all our data in there, let's put a little bit of structure around it, and we want to do the kind of fast queries that we're uh, comfortable with uh, doing in, in, in uh, technology like a Vertica or a Greenplum or a Teradata uh, Aster. We'll move the data out of Hadoop via connectors into, into one of those databases, and then that's where we'll do our analytics. The idea is, uh, the idea is, uh, uh, clearly she was not particularly interested in that uh, talking point, but nevertheless, the idea with what uh, bringing the SQL aspect to uh, Hadoop is, well, there's no reason to move your data out of Hadoop anymore. You're essentially bringing the SQL database into the Hadoop environment uh, and running SQL directly on top of Hadoop. Uh, so that's what Hadoop's doing, kind of from a native of a framework, they've started their whole company. The technology is from the ground up built to do this. Uh, Cloudera with Impala is kind of building this as an add-on. Uh, you know, this is the latest uh, development on their platform. Um, so, th so, so was the timing of Impala designed to try to freeze Adapt? Was that sort of a, a ploy, or was it just sort of two companies on a parallel universe? Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it was a ploy. Uh, I think it, it, it may serve that purpose to a degree, but 
this is where. So Impala's real in your view. I mean, it's it's getting traction in the marketplace, getting customers. Well, I didn't quite go that far. It's still very early for Impala. Uh, as far as uh, latest I heard, it's still in private beta. It's very early days. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on the number of contributors to the because it's an open source project. Clutter open source the Impala project, and there aren't there aren't too many. Just a handful, most Cloudera uh, employees. So well, we should try to find the app guys today. I I, I heard they're going to be here, although I haven't seen any of them. Uh, I heard they're in production, so let's try to confirm that. Yeah, so uh, so it's very early days in terms of Impala, but I don't think it was necessarily time to uh, to impact Hadoop. I think it's just a natural evolution uh, of Hadoop. I think we've you know we've done some research and we've talked about our uh, our, our fundamental uh, thesis that we believe. Uh, a unified big data platform uh, or data infrastructure is the right way to go. The idea of connectors and moving data back and forth really is just a stopgap measure for now. So I think, you know, I, I think to a degree the, the market is listening to some of our, our insights and uh, to me it was just the next kind of evolution uh, and, and I'm not surprised to see it and I would expect similar moves uh, from Hortonworks from, and from others. Uh, that, are, that are playing in the Hadoop space. You think we'll see an acquisition this year of one of those guys that we've just been talking about, one of the infrastructure players, a big move to try to shake things up a little bit by one of the whales who really wants to play in this game? Uh, yeah, I think we will, actually. I, 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 you know, who do you think is going to go? My inclination, uh, you know, going back to my... Uh, my analysis of the three major players, I think the least likely is Hortonworks. They're very early in, the, in their cycle. Um, you know, Cladera is the most mature uh, in terms of you know being around for the longest. Uh, but Mapr, you know, being uh, is really got a lot of momentum. So I would say it's either going to be Cladera or Mapr are the most likely candidates for an acquisition. And yeah, Cladera is talking IPO. I mean, I don't know how real that is, but sure. you know, um, it's certainly possible. Um, I think, you know, in terms of uh, potential companies that might want to do the acquiring, I mean, they're the, the ones you'd expect. I think IBM and Oracle are probably at the top of that list. Um, Microsoft, not so much. Uh, so the, Why not Microsoft? I, I think they, they seem to be taking a little bit more of a, an open ecosystem partnering approach and a little bit slower approach. You know, they've done their partnership with Hortonworks uh, for the HD Insights platform. Uh, so they, so Hortonworks might be the natural company they might look to if they're looking for an acquisition. But as I said, I, I think it's a little early uh, in the Hortonworks cycle, so I, I don't really see that happening. Um, but you know, Cladera, you know, take make, take uh, take it for what it is. But you know, Mike Olson's a an Oracle guy uh, in his previous job, and uh, you know, how about Splunk? Let's talk about Splunk a little bit. Big IPO last year, really doing well. Um, rabid fan base. Users love Splunk. What's the update on Splunk? Splunk, well, uh, so as you may have heard, they are the uh, center of uh, rumors around acquisition as well. And again, the same players, IBM and Oracle, are the two uh, suitors. Uh, it's kind of that's kind of that news was kind of hit last week. It's gone a little dark, so we're not sure where that stands exactly. But they're having where there's smoke, there's fire. They say. Yeah, well, they had a great year last year. Uh, they're, they're doing very well this year. I don't believe they reported full earning, full earnings for the year, but they're probably going to top. $180 million in revenue. Uh, they've got great momentum. They're now evolving their, uh, you know, Splunk really started uh, focusing on making sense of uh, infrastructure, IT infrastructure data, machine generated data. And they did that with uh, a series of applications, essentially for, for specific functions in the data center. Uh, what they're doing now is kind of opening up their their their, uh, their platform really to outside developers. So they've uh, announced several SDKs over the last, uh, in the fall. Um, I, I recently spoke with a company called Prelert, which has developed uh, um, anomaly detection uh, software that they have built specifically, uh, the, uh, a version specifically for the Splunk platform. Uh, so it's going to run on top of Splunk. So Splunk's really getting now into the platform game, not just, so they're offering kind of their own applications on top of their platform, but now they're also opening up to developers, sort of like the, uh, you know, the Apple iPhone model. You've got Apple applications you can run on your iPhone, but it's also open up to outside developers and you can run those as well. So I think it's a good move uh, on the whole. The risk for Splunk in that case is, of course, if someone comes along and starts creating applications that are uh, that kind of cannibalize their existing business. Uh, but on the whole, I think it's probably a, a smart move, and you know they're under a lot of pressure, public company to deliver. So now Splunk's one of those companies. Uh, so many companies out there now looking at it, and say, "Wow, why didn't we think of that?" You know, and so, uh, but that's great. You know, they gotta love the innovation. All right, Jeff, we gotta roll. Uh, let's, uh, get more guests. Thanks for coming on.